I'm very much looking forward to today's webinar. Um, Mark, I've known you over the years, but I've just had a, a very brief update on your bio. And I just want to say what an exceptional human being you are. So <laughs> not, it's true. It's true. Um, so, you know, for some very brief background, Mark, you had quite a few hurdles to um, overcome as a child, including, you know, speech impediment, dyslexia, bullying, the whole shebang bang Now, the yeah. only reason I want to say that is because what I think you have done now is impressive, regardless of all of that. Like, you, you had to move beyond that to get to where you are. Um, but it yeah. sounds like that is, was kind of what inspired you to, once you set your mind to something, you were going to go ahead and do it. And I get the impression that that's why you are so passionate about communicating with people about how to set themselves up in business and also, you know, coaching and consulting and things like that. So my understanding is that you had a very um, successful portrait photography studio in Melbourne, sold that already a few years ago, 2015. Yep. Then you moved into business coaching and consulting because you yourself had a business coach who would kind of keep you on target, ask you questions, make yeah. sure you were accountable, you know, tested your theories and things like that. And that's kind of what you now employ in all of your coaching and consulting. Yeah. In a nutshell, all of those things. <laughs> Good. And um, yeah. the, I think today's topic is particularly poignant because of COVID and the fact that all the goalposts have changed for, for all businesses or for all areas of our life, but for photographers specifically, you know, social distancing is, does have quite an impact on um, your business. So marketing and building trust and activities like that are more important than ever. So um, I'm looking forward to hearing what you're saying about COVID specifically, or, you know, think tactics you can employ in this um, moment in time. Um, so everybody, please feel free to, I know Mark loves um, to have the audience engaged and generally he'd be able to see our participants, but um, I have already learned a few marketing tips from Mark and never <laughs> really thought about how appropriate your name is. Yes, marketing tips tips from Mark. Um, <laughs> and I've already decided that I will be uh, changing the um, Zoom Zoom from a webinar setting to meetings in the future so we can feel more engaged and interactive. Um, yes. So in the meantime, though, please feel free to um, type in any questions into the chat manager window. And hey, Mark, you're, you're happy to to moderate all of that yourself. Yeah, I, I can see the chat. I can see questions come up. You're the master. So um, just yeah, do it. I can see who's here. It's all, all good. All is good. All is good. Well, over to you. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, so yeah, so for those people that don't know me, my name is Mark. Um, how do, far do I go back? Just um, probably go back a little while to understand... To, un to understand where you need to go, you kind of need to know where you've been in the past as well. So, yes, talking about in the years past, I did have a speech impediment issue. It still comes back to haunt me every now and then as well. Um, but, you know, I had to re rework out how to talk again, pretty much. Um, and um, kind of understand that, that same kind of tenacity of like, let's just do what you want to do and who cares about everybody else is a really um, important thing to have. It can sound really big headed at the same time, but when you're facing a little bit of diversity and a little bit of struggle, sometimes we get so much caught up on other people's opinions and thoughts that it just cripples the rest of us. So I guess from, if we're going way back, like learning that at such a young age to just be you in your business, just be you in your personality. And you know what, shock horror, not everyone's going to love you and you're not going to be the everyone's favorite person, but that's okay because you don't like them either. <laughs> so it's like, it's one of those things like you'll connect with people who connect with you and you'll connect with people who like the same things you like and all that type of stuff. So in terms of um, your blocks and your hangups and things like that, the best way to overcome it is just be you in a nutshell. Um, so I guess um, from there, 
we go into the photography side where I learned to be an underwater photographer on a dive boat in the Whit Sundays. And that's where the marketing really started. So what happened there, I had a boat every day of 50, 60 people that I had to connect with. Now, at this point of time, my speech was actually really quite bad and it was a really challenging time, but it was just something you had to overcome because if you had no choice, you don't like, you just got to deal with it. So, it's all, um, so I, I, I learned, you know, there's five questions that you can ask people on a tourist boat. <laughs> Where are you from? Where have you been? Where are you going to? What was your favorite place? And um, what's on your bucket list? And any tra traveler will be able to have a conversation for an hour just on those things. So what I learned a lot about was that was the communication styles and connecting with people. And we all have people in our lives that like, they're like, Jen, that guy or that girl, they just get along with everyone, don't they? They're just... Do you, you know, when you have that connection with people that you just go, gee, they're really friendly. You just get along with them because they match, they mirror, they communicate. If you talk fast, they talk fast. If you talk slow, they talk slow. Um, what you're trying, big bang at my house. What you're trying to do is build connection and, and, and build rapport and all that type of stuff. So I guess it's one of those things in terms of marketing moving forward in your business. All of that is just as important. So what I said to Lindy before, Lindy, we could have a great conversation about traveling. Where have you gone? Where have you been? What do you love to photograph? What's your favorite things to photograph? You know, like what equipment do you use? How do you get through the customs with all of your heavy, with all of your heavy gear? All that type of stuff. So I guess when it comes to, to marketing, a lot of it's just on general communication in the first place and just connecting with people. And that connection and those experiences are really important as well. Mm. Moving from there, I worked, I went to the, uh, the UK and I worked in a gym as a gym representative phone consultant person, um, like a membership kind of person, which then I got a desk and an office that had a, a phone on it and I looked at the phone and I'm like, what's that for? And they're like, well, you have to call people about six hours a day. And I went, Oh shit, <laughs> this is going to be a challenge. So then I learned confidence to over eight months to talk to people on the phone and connect with people and phone scripts and connection with. So I guess on the boat was um, more connecting face to face and then on the it's phone easier was more, than on the phone yeah and then on the phone was more connecting on the phone because you can't see the person so understanding phone scripts and um, what to say when to say how to say where they are in the buying cycle like how to how to get them through the door and all that type of stuff was on on the phone then working in a photography studio in the UK um, we used to turn over we turned over 1 million pounds from January to August it's a million pounds that's like 2.4 million Australian dollars okay in like how many months is it August was that eight months eight months nine months whatever anyway in anyone's term it's a shit ton of money it's a yeah. lot of clients a lot of great customer service a lot of experience of of us uh, selling to people and educating people and connecting with people and i was that fun aussie guy that worked in the uk studio like you're the other you've got a funny accent now you have a funny accent and working with kids was awesome because it's like i couldn't understand them and they can't understand me and we had a great time <laughs> anyway learning what we did in the uk launched um in australia when i came back from the uk i worked with that site with an a, a, a Jerry and also Nick, Jerry oh, and Nick really? Jonas. Yeah. I, so I worked as a wedding photographer for four years as, as well. So again, learn how to shoot the, the weddings, learn how to communicate with the weddings, with a luxury brand, all that type of stuff. Hmm. Then into portraits with Enhance, which you'll see in the video in a second as well. And um, that was all the portraits side of things. So I guess it's kind of like marketing isn't something that you will get good at overnight 
Um, yeah, I do have a course that can help you with that. We'll talk about that after. Um, doesn't It's not something that you will just develop overnight. It's over time. It's over process. And it's just learning yourself and knowing who you are at the same time. Um, and yeah, connecting with people. So as Libby said before, Enhanced Studios, we had it for about eight years. <coughs> I mean, we photographed about 500 families a, a year. Um, it was a high volume studio, but high end boutique studio at the same time. So it was quite hard, hard to get the high volume. So with the marketing, it's all about the bums on seats. But then also too, the great client education and uh, service and experience to get them to spend $2,000, $4,000, $6,000 as well. So getting that mix was really important uh, for us. Um, then we shot 20 weddings a year as well, just because I wanted to shoot weddings. So I capped it at 20 weddings and weddings I just did for shits and doodles. It was just for fun because it was fun. Weddings was easy. Weddings is fun to shoot. It's the money for jam and... Um, when the marketing's done correctly, we, I didn't have to do too much at all, which was awesome. <laughs> um, so in December, 2015, I had a life change completely moved to Queensland with my family, my wife's family's all up in Queensland. So, um, if you ever had told me whilst having enhanced studios that I was going to sell enhanced studios, I would say, you're kidding yourself. There's no way this is, this is my baby. I will protect it forever kind of thing. <laughs> It's amazing how life just changes completely and you just all of a sudden you go in a different direction. So Enhanced Studios was uh, sold to Karina, who was my studio manager, who's now looking after it, who now has a higher average than me as well, who's doing extremely Good well. Training, Mark. Good training. Exactly. And what it shows though, what that teaches us, it's not about the person. It's not a, it's about the method. It's about the process. The system works and there's a portrait system and a wedding system that works. And if you can adapt a little bit of your personality and have your own personality in there, it's like the system works. Don't mess with the system. The reason why franchises are so successful is because the system works. They're tried, they're tested, they're processed. They're, you know, it's just the rack them and stack them kind of scenario. Now, in the photography industry, we are very unique. That not only are we photographers that we have um, a product that we're selling at the end, like all of your amazing albums and books and everything else that you have, it's also the service as well. So it's a service-based industry that finishes with a product. Yeah. We can't really have any more harder business than what being a photographer is. <laughs> like, seriously. Being a service-based industry is easy. You just got to give the service like, you know, when I say easy, I mean like anyone that sells at a time, like an accountant, a doctor, a physio, um, all that service-based kind of like a role, um, Sparky and Builder and all that type of thing, where product is your TVs, your your clothing, your retail stores. So we're like a service and retail at the same time, trying to mix it together to have a great experience. And every product is a unique customized, is, it's a custom build pretty much. It's exhausting. <laughs> and on top of that, I think, don't you th I think most photographers um, uh, come on board or, or what has brought them into the world of photography is their craft and creativity, not the sales and the marketing and the ability to, um, you know, uh, you know, the servicing and the sales and the marketing might be their, you know, less favorite tasks to do, which is kind of why I wanted to host this today. Cause I speak to so many of our customers who are like, Oh, you know, I love your products, but I'm not really good at selling them. I don't know how to promote them. You know, I, I, I don't like to sound salesy. I'm not very good at sales. And anyway, I, I don't think of, I think it will be interesting to hear how it doesn't actually have to be about what we consider sleazy sales. It can, it's about education, trust, rapport. Yep. Yep. All those different things. And if we, the saying is the more time and effort you put in the front end, the less time you have to put in the back end. The more that they know up front, the better the education, the better the process, the better the system, the better the upfront info, 
mean when you're doing the sales appointment, you just got to show them the products that they've already told you that they wanted, that they've already seen, that the photos that they like, and all you have to say is, it's done. This is it. Would you like to buy it? And they will say, yes, because that's what they want. You've already gone through all the effort. If you ever get to the end of a sales design appointment for portraits or weddings and you turn to your client and you go, so what would you like to do with the images? You have totally missed the boat. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. have totally, you, in other words, the more question is, so I've just kind of shot whatever I felt like. I think they're awesome. I hope that you think they're awesome and I hope that you buy something. Would you like to buy something? <laughs> is in a nutshell the conversation that you're really trying to say. So the idea is that we want to get out there as much as we possibly can. So to help me with this presentation, to make sure that I'm directing the conversation in the right way, where we have a few people here, what I'd love for you to do in the chat box, I'd love for you to write, um, what do you shoot? I've got a few people here going, Renee is portraits and the weddings. Megan's just getting started, that she's not here anymore. Linda is doing travel. Um, Renee, Mr. Uh, portraits we've got and portraits and weddings, spent last year photographing on the road, um, life beyond traffic lights, started a book there, travel. So yeah, so write in the chat box, people, come on. <laughs> Work with me here. Work You've with kind me. of got the whole gamut there, really. Yeah, I do have the whole gamut. So. <laughs> A lot of what I'll be talking about today is going to be focused on the portraits, weddings, and the domestic side of things. Yeah. But I guess you can apply this to virtually any photography anyway. I guess the hard part is, the hard part is this, and this is kind of why I've always focused on the domestic side of things, is because people buy photos of people. It's easy to sell photos of people, people buying photos of people. It's harder and hats off to everybody who does, but it's harder to sell artwork of trees and landscapes to people who don't have a connection with the tree and landscape because they're not a, they're not a relative or a friend. So it's just, it's just an, a hurdle that you have to get across to kind of show them why would you want to spend that much money or why do you need that coffee table book or why do you need that wall art of the different, you know, um, travel photography book and things like that and, and show the value behind what the product is as well. Now, hats off to anyone who's doing that in that landscape space. You are amazing if you're making good coin out of it. Kudos to you. Brilliant. I find it really hard because I'm a people person. So it's just one of those things that I guess you need to go, you know, what's the why behind the what or the what behind the why, whichever way it goes. It's like when we're photographing for travel or documentary or kind of landscape, like what do you want to do with the images? Same asking, asking your clients, what would you like to do with the artwork? Asking the photographer, yes, you're a travel photographer. What would you like to do with your images? I'm shooting a book. Awesome. Then you need to tell the story through the book. So you need to make sure you've got the images and text and copy to make sure that you convey that story at the same time. So it's one of those things that it, depending on what you're doing is depending on what you're doing. You know what I mean? Hey, Mark, can I, I just something you said then um, is interesting to me. Um, I totally agree that it is easier to sell images of people because there's an emotional, there's an obvious emotional connection to it. Um, but when people say who are landscape or nature photographers have printed books with us and, you know, the, the ones that I see that work really well have an element of what you just said because they've photographed the landscape or the site in their local area. So there still is an emotional connection to it and okay. that makes it easier to, you know, there's a natural affinity people have with those images or if you are selling, like, let's look at, um, who are some of the successful landscape 
um, photographers in Australia and, and I'm going to go back to the book form because, you know, that's kind of what I know. You know, Ken Duncan, we make a book for him that he sells at $4,000 a pop. Now, I believe that he is very unique and part of his reason, the reason he can sell books like that at such great prices is because he had his heyday in the 80s where, you know, there was a very different um, audience around him. But what he's been very good at is maintaining his audience and keeping his audience and they follow each edition of his book. That's one example. Another example is, say, Christian Fletcher over in Western Australia. Yep. He sells books quite, you know, well, uh, you know, a good number of books because he has a gallery that they're attached to. People come in on holidays and they're not emotionally connected to the place because they live there, but because they've had a great experience there. So get people, you know, you've got to also think about where you're selling this book and, you know, who your audience is. So they're just a few examples of landscape images in books that have worked. Yeah. And even fun things to do for tra travel. Like we, um, when we're in Cambodia, um, oh, I missed that part of the story. The short part. Anyway, December 28th last year, moved to Cambodia with the family to live for a year or two, just for shits and giggles for fun to, to kind of volunteer for an organisation over there, which was going to be awesome. Um, COVID comes in and the company pretty much sends all of the expats all of the expats home. So we got home on the 22nd of March, which is my birthday. Oh. And, but we came home to nothing. We sold our cars. We sold half of our furniture. Our house has been rented out, everything. Like we virtually came back to nothing. So we've had to rebuild from scratch. So thanks COVID, awesome. Anyway, <laughs> that's another story. It won't but, stop you, Mark. I'm no, sure it will not no. stop you. But in Cambodia, I guess the reason with the book thing there was a book that I wanted to buy, which mm. was called um, uh, Things on a Tuk Tuk. And it was just a book oh, yes. of things oh. on Tuk Tuks and motorbikes. And it was like, there were pigs and there were cows and there were like 12 Double people. Double mattresses. Bike, mattresses and, you know, people sell like just random fun stuff and i was like i really want this and i'm like you know what? i'll just shoot my own book to do this because i can um but we got kids out of the country but anyway um so it's but what like you're saying there mark if if i'm correct is that you know you have to think about like you can if you enjoy shooting nature wildlife um landscapes and you want to sell it and let's say sell it in book format, it can be done. And yeah. I have seen, um, but, but in that situation, the element that made that book work, I think was the humor, like yeah. taking the images and, and but focusing on humorous parts of, you know, the sites and, and things that you see. Um, mm -hmm. a, an interesting discovery that I've made in the last little while is um, I've been analyzing crowdfunding campaigns for photo books by Australian and New Zealand photographers over the last five, six, seven years. And um, the most popular book genre or genre of books and the most successful are generally travel and, you know, sites based and, but the top of the list goes to pets and animals. Yeah. Pets and animals. Is always it, a people story. can relate to it. Um, and, you know, there's generally a humorous element to it. Um, but yeah, I just thought you might like to know that. And believe it or not, the average campaign that is successful raises about twenty thousand dollars, which is more than enough to make a, to do a book run. To do a few books, yeah. The, the, the other part too is um, creating books to um, to uh, how, how do I want to say it? to events like the Christchurch um, earthquake. Yeah. Um, there was the guy who the photographer who captured all the photography of that event. Glen I was, Howie, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was too. And like you made an event about it. Now, a, a few photographers have used the COVID-19, um, the driveway project to create a book for their local area. So yes. sometimes it's like people, it's kind of like using the book to highlight an event that makes the book 
worthy to buy because it's a moment in time that you won't get back. And it's also beyond yourself. It's not a project about yeah. you. It's a project about the people and the community around you. Yeah. yeah. So yes, has broader appeal. So there's lots of little ideas here. So yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump into my little slide deck presentation here as well. <clears throat> but just before I do, let's see who's actually here or not. If you're here, just type, I'm here in the chat. <laughs> let's just see who's really here and who's not here. Oh, nice work, Nick. Nick, yes. Yep. Well, oh, still oh, here. Yep. Oh. Yep. Okay. Okay. We, you're here. Just making sure you didn't just log in and walk away, come back in two hours. Now, cool. because you've been so active in that participation, <laughs> write down again for me so it's clearer for those people who haven't answered. What do you shoot? That's cool. See, this is going to be an interactive conversation, people. Yeah, and how are you coping, Mark, not being able to see them? You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm having a little bit of, um, yeah, anxiety about it, but that's okay. <laughs> good. Well, We're don't good. worry, I'll be changing the system as a result of your marketing tips, so uh, thanks. Cool. All right, my next question for those people here, so nature, portraits, weddings, awesome. What do you want from me? What do you want out of this? Why are you here? And don't write, I want to get kind of tips on marketing. That's a little bit too, yeah. <laughs> like, thank you, Captain Obvious. Like, what do you want? Is it about? Have you seen the notebook? The notebook? Oh, yeah, the film. Want? Yeah, the film, the notebook. Yeah, what do you like, want? It's not that easy. Yes, it is. What <laughs> do you want? Like, what do you want? Why are you here? Why are you going to spend two hours with me and Libby today? And what do you want to get out of it? Uh, I, I, I've got some questions if well after everybody pitches theirs yeah yeah at the moment it's um travel story photography lifestyle landscape oh, we've got a mix of everything we do <laughs> yeah nobody's actually writing what they want though unless they're still typing what do you want it's not that easy uh, uh okay. like one day to process a book my two, two things would be how to create an audience social media following yes we will be covering that mark cool. i was going to say customers. yes mm-hmm we're going to be covering both of those. What else is there? I'm a dinosaur. How on earth do I reach demographics without newspapers and magazines? Yes, we'll cover that. I really want some tips on marketing and for nature. What's that word? Nature philosophers. Philosophers. As you say, it's not easy. I really want tips on marketing for nature philosophers. Now, that I want to know if that was a typo or if that's like a really nice term for somebody who takes their nature photography to another level. Uh, yeah. And I want to know how to target market in my local area only on social media. Oh, I'd like yeah. to know that too. Cool. I want to know how to... Um, or FB or ad, how they work. Yep, good yes, question. Audience. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. Now we're getting some conversation. Yes, it was a typo. <laughs> it was a typo. Yes, no, I, it's that damn autocorrect, Keith. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Damn you. Damn you autocorrect. And hey, Mark, just on that where um, Renee has said she'd like to know how to target ma the market in her local area on social media and Facebook yep. ads, um, I'm interested. One thing that I see, and this, this all kind of weaves in nicely because I got Mark to talk because I want to learn too, um, is that um, I think what I have seen is that in this scenario that we're hearing people talk about here, people who would like to potentially self-publish a book, that um, the biggest, one of the biggest um, kind of tools in your kit is to have a well-defined and sizable um, email list because social media is one thing, but I find some people might argue, and I'm fascinated to hear what you say, whether an email list is more valuable. Yep. 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 It's very cool. I'd love to talk about the basics, deciding on size of books and things. And right. hey, one thing just to help you, Mark, too, um, just so everybody knows, um, I am actually doing a webinar in two weeks from today, which is specifically about self-publishing and how to self-publish a photo book. And that's kind of where I, I can help talk about sizing and formats and things like that. Um, I think, Mark, what I would love from you is, you know, the, the marketing tips that I don't know about. And no. um, then I can cover if we don't get time, or, but it sounds like we will have time. No. Um, I can cover the formats and things like that towards the end. Yeah, cool. Awesome. All right. 
Let's do this. I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to press. And thanks to everybody for, for getting involved. I can see, Mark, that your, your philosophy already works. Yeah. Get everyone involved. Yeah, come on. Here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> All right. Let me just, sorry, I'm just pressing some buttons to uh, clear up. You can see the Mark Rizzetto picture. Yes, yes, we can. Sweet. Okay. Let's dive into this. Here for a good time, not a long time. So most of this is going to be about the portrait industry and the wedding industry. It is very easily adaptable to everything else anyway. So it's kind of like, it's like photography. You just make it work with what you have. Either way, we all prefer our clients to do this. This is probably one of the most common things that we want our clients to do in the first place is to throw money at us. Oh, good. Because... I was thinking it was your photographs. No, no, it's not. Sorry. <laughs> it's throwing money at you. Throw money at you. We want our clients to throw money at us, but we need to give them a reason to throw money at us. Otherwise, they don't want to spend anything with us because they don't value anything that we do. All right. So this is where we're going to go through with topic number one, clients are made and not found. We're going to cover the six P's. Prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. Let me read that out for you. Is just that your you own quote there, Mark? No, it's the six P's. There's lots of different P's. This <laughs> is my favourite though. This is the short version. There's like 12 P's as well. Six P's. Prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. There's two things that you need to prepare. Number one is you. Have you set up your photography, your pages, the size of your book, the pricing of your book, your website, your landing pages, your education. Have you set up everything that you can take control of to present what you do as a business in the first place to help prepare, step number two, your clients. So your client, is there enough information to make informed decisions about you and your business and what you offer and how it works and what the client experience is and how to purchase your books and how big they are and how much shipping is and how much costing is and like how prepared are they to make an informed decision that yes, I would like to buy that from you because we all have clients out there that will go from the idea of like, I want to buy something to I've kind of purchased it, right? And this space in between can be anywhere from five minutes to five years. Mm. I'm thinking like we've all got those people, like, yeah, let's write in a in the chat box. When you had that idea thought that I wanted to buy a car, how long did it take you to buy that car? In the chat box. As soon as you go, I'm gonna buy a car. Whoa. Is it something that you do like within a week, you just go out and buy a new car or do you research it or do you look at it? And does it take a couple of weeks? <laughs> Renee brought over the phone, <laughs> like three to four months. I'm always impulsive. Like for me, I reckon for me to buy a car, I reckon I'm probably one to two months. By the time I see it, I know what I want to get and then I need to find the right car for me as well. All right. So it's kind of like, at the moment, I don't know what car I want to buy and now I need to educate myself on the type of cars I want. And then towards the end, you go, this is the make, this is the model, this is the brand, this is the size, this is the color, these are the questions and you know exactly what you want to buy. You with me? Yep, we're with you. Cool. Now, client education is the key to successful sales. <laughs> we need to make sure that we're educated. What what, why is that so funny? No, 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 I've just seen, sorry, Renee just said, <laughs> well, sorry, Louise de said she's still dithering after six months. I'm terrified of car salesmen. Sorry. And that is the same as photographers. Do you know how many portrait photographers, people don't go to portrait photographers because they feel like they're going to get stung or they want to make the right choice? Same thing. So my question for you, Louise, and you don't have to answer in in the kind of chat box, like, What's your roadblock? Like, what would make it easier for you to buy a car? Would it be that you get someone else to buy it for you? That you get a broker? That you 
you get someone who knows about cars that can actually make an informed decision for you because they're more qualified than you are to know about cars. So, um, yeah. Interesting that they've both said that they were terrified of the salesman or woman. Um, yeah. And maybe that, do you think, is based on lack of trust or interest? Like they're more concerned about the dollars than, than meeting the benefits of what, you know, you're looking for, matching the benefits? Yeah. I mean, lots and lots and lots and lots of things. I guess that we want to do is set yourself up for the win. We want to make sure that we've done everything in our six P's of preparation, prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> we need to make sure that we've done everything that we can to not have people feel like that. We want them to not be feel like you're getting ripped off, not be feel like you're getting harassed, not be feel like you're getting scammed and not like you want to feel like you're legitimately care you're looked after. Mm -hmm. So that is trust. So that's your trust. Okay. So where do we get that information from? Referrals, trust icons in terms of your um, association, trust icons, reviews online as well. Like the person you meet, like there's lots of trust things that we can do. Yeah. Right. So I guess what we're going to do, we're going to go through the steps um, of the first time the photographer required. All of a sudden, you've woke up and you went, you know what? I need a photographer. Or I'm going to buy an, a nature book or a travel book. And what's the first thing you do? You Google, you go on Facebook, you go on Instagram, you'll ask your friends, you start with the word of mouth. And you're trying to figure out what do you want? Like, and I'm going to go back to a car because it's easy to relate to everything. You know, you need a car. You just have got no idea what car you want at this stage. All of a sudden you've downloaded, it's almost like you've downloaded car sales kind of dot com app on your phone and you've typed in that I want to spend 30 K and what do I get for that? You've got no idea. All right. Then you start to browse and research you will go to the website. So from a photography point of view, they will go to your website. Okay, so who's our travel photographer? I think, Louis, not Louise. Um, uh, 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 it was Lindy. 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 Where has she been? What kind of photography does she do? Wow, she's got amazing work. Oh, she has a book. What's in the book? Are you showing the book? Are you educating them about the book? Your website is designed to go to the website, help inform them about your services and your unique selling points. So if I was selling a book about Cambodia, my unique selling point is that I just didn't travel to Cambodia. I lived and breathed it for two years. And 10% of the funds are going to this organization, which is this particular organization. Now, all of a sudden, the person buying that book in Cambodia might have a heart for that kind of organization as well, and therefore goes, oh, Mark believes in what I believe in. Yeah, I'd love to support the organization, and I get the book as well. Yeah. This is like a win-win deal. I'm going to buy it. So I guess it's like your website is there to help inform them about what it is that you do. Now, in terms of your website, your website says two types. One is a basic portfolio focused kind of site. Homepage, a gallery, packages, prices, testimonial about us and contact us. And that is generally the basics. When you start out, that's what you generally get. Okay, so it's kind of like it's just the basic of going, here's my pretty pictures. Would you like to buy them? Other people have brought them too. You can contact us to buy it here. Or we want to switch it up and go to something more advanced where it's all about in photography, in the portrait point of view, the client experience, finished products, the prices, the welcome videos, the room view, the website hook, the education, um, the blogging, 
frequently asked questions, terms and conditions, call to action, to buy, to register, to pre-order, to help support this organization. See, I think that if you sell books for travel, you should be sell travel prints at the same time. I think they should just go hand in hand. There's no reason why you can't. But then it's like, what's the product? What's the size? How much is it? How does it come to me? Why do I want to spend a thousand dollars on your print of wherever it is when I can go to an online store and get one for two hundred dollars for the same size for the same kind of thing? What's the difference? Why you? What makes you so? What makes you so special? To put it simple, it's like why bother? Why bother get it from you? Why am I going to spend? $20,000 on a 10 kind of Duncan wall <laughs> print. Yeah, yeah. Four. I saw that one when we were in um, um, Las Vegas for WPPI. We went to the 10 Duncan, was it 10 Duncan a, a gallery? No, I Vegas? think it might be Peter Lick. Oh, Peter Lick, yes. The guy that was sold the most expensive photo to his friend and then brought it back off. Again. Yeah, yeah. That guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's guy. it. Peter Lick, like, why am I going to spend $100,000 on a Peter Lick image when I can get, you know, someone else to do the same photo, do the same thing, but, like, what one thing that's really cool that Peter Lick's in the gallery, they have this room called the dark, it's like a dark room, and what it is, the image changes with the lighting condition. And it's freaking rad. It is, I don't know what they do. I don't know how it works, but it is the coolest thing ever. The print almost comes alive. I don't even know how to explain it. It is just ridiculously awesome. And that's why people pay for it. Because it's not normal. So I guess it's one of the things, the welcome video. Every photographer should have a welcome video, whether they're portraits, weddings, commercials, headshots selling travel photos like tell people why and what you're passionate about and you know why are you traveling to cambodia and also why prove you? why you're trustworthy and why they should want to deal with you just just seeing people i think when it's when a lot of this communication you're talking about is online and not in person then people want to know yeah what's special about you but why should they trust you too yeah Exactly. So there's all sorts of things with the advanced focus, the website to say why, like why, why choose you? Why your books? Why, why is your book a $5,000, $4,000 book? <laughs> what makes your book so damn special? <laughs> I can go to Snapfish and I can get a book there for 30 bucks. Like, and you have the same conversation with photographers as well. You know, why your paper? Why your books? Why your seals? Why, like, you need to justify to photographers why buy from you in the first place. And then the photographers yep. can then tell the clients of why they should buy the book as well for all those features and benefit kind of the reasons. And, and may I just interject there to say that I have recently added a whole new section to our memento pro website which is has promotional content there so that you know you can use these images and videos and the text to you know prove uh you know or to show the way that your products are manufactured or handcrafted to show they're australian made i give explanations behind in the case of albums and cotton rag um you know why it's you know, has such longevity and why that's important um, to your clients. And the other thing that I'm about to do, and you've, Mark, I'm learning every minute here, is that um, you've just acknowledged here that having the blog to educate your customers is, is helpful. So I actually have some content that I will put up on the blog site in the coming weeks now, which explains why, you know, paper, tangible print products have a different level of emotional attachment to people and memory and things like that. Why kids seeing their images with their family 
in a in print improves their sense of self identity. Um, and Mark, just Nick is asking where they are on the website. Can I jump in just for one second? Yeah, to them? yeah I'll start So sharing. I'm just going to um, yeah. share screen. And here we go. And I will be adding to this now. But um, can you guys now see that? Yep. All right. That. So that's not the one I wanted to go to. The one I want to go to here is promotional content. So you can get to promotional content here. Um, in the service menu and you'll see we have right now it to be fair it is um, very album focused because I've been preparing it for wedding and portrait photographers but I will be going in in the coming weeks to add more images of books um, this is for people who are really at the start and they don't even have you know sample albums done but they just want to get something online it's a PSD file so you can drop your own images in this shows you how the books are crafted by human beings with old school, you know, materials. This is, um, I'll improve on our videos in the coming months, but this that's just shows the, how long it takes and how much effort goes into the production cover materials. But this is what I think people might find really interesting, especially in relation to our um, cotton rag and inkjet prints, which explains the you know the benefits and the longevity of them. So I'll stop sharing now, but that that is um, a recent addition, and I think it might be helpful for you guys. Actually, and one more I should show you. Sorry, is that we do have a blog post that has lots of information. So it's actually blog. Dot moment. Oh no, I think I've probably got it in the. Uh, if I just go to the top here, look at that. Amazing. Yeah. You set things up in advance, isn't it, Mark? Unbelievable. I know. So He's one I prepared earlier. Yeah. So there's um oh, an, there's a, array of different um, you know, topics and for wedding, portrait, travel, landscape, art photographers, it's all there. So you'll find more information there as well. There yeah. we go. Yeah, and it's one of those things like if 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 you can if you um I guess if you express the passion of why it's important for you, that will come off of why it's important to everybody else. Yeah. Like it's one of those, the, the, you know, one of those things. Like we've got artwork everywhere in our house. We've got photos everywhere of all different products and all different types of things. Because we love looking at ourselves, really. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, you know, like the kids love to see it. The memory is there as well. And everything's on the digital world and we're getting into printing yeah. now. And I'm sure you had that conversation. Even so, um, check this out. This is cool. So, because, oh, because we've just moved and we've travelled overseas, here's a whole box full. Of photo prints? Of, um... Like photos and albums. Look, there's me. Aww. Oh, wow. Right. So this is what you took with you. No, no, we didn't take it with you. I spent the other day <laughs> with a deaky mark. <laughs> like, and do you know what? I loved it. I sat on the floor and went through all of my photos. And these are my photos. These aren't my family photos. These are like me growing up and me with my mates and schoolies week and traveling There's nothing very cathartic about doing that ah oh, and it's awesome and you just sit there going you know what this is why prints and printed books are so important because i value it my kids love it they think it's awesome um like my little girl and i taking her photo book to school for sh for for uh Go and tell because she thought it was cool. So, yeah, Beautiful. one of those things. So, Beautiful. there you go. Anyway, that's the presentation. You get the idea. <laughs> I'm just whacking some um, URLs into the chat window too for everyone in case they want to follow those up later. Yeah, cool. Awesome. All right, let's go back to that button here. So, I guess let the website do the work for you. Like, you don't, if you're an introvert, let your website do your work. If you're an extrovert, still let your website do your work. Like, the website will do the work for you if, you, if like you said, you don't like to be a sleazy salesman, the website will work for you. 
Like if the content's on the website, by the time you speak to them, they already know the information anyway. So therefore you don't even have to talk about it. <laughs> it's already there type thing. All right. So in terms of like a welcome video, I'll just give you a quick example, which is this one here. Hi guys, welcome to Enhanced Photography Studios. My name's Mark and I'm the owner and the photographer at the studio as well. Let me take you through the journey and the experience of what Enhanced Photography Studios is all about. Enhanced Studios are winners of over 50 international and national state photography awards. We photograph about 500 families a year, even pets and dogs as well. And from a newborn and pregnancy stage, we shoot about 200 of those as well. So there's not an age and stage that we can't actually handle. So from here, what we're gonna do, the Richardson family are having to shoot right now. So let's go upstairs and see what they're up to. Thank you. Thank you. So basically you're giving them insight into what they'll experience. Yeah. Look at all that wall product as well. Your photographer's chosen your best shot and created an amazing slideshow for you. So let's fast forward a little bit and have a look at the Richardson's design appointment. So this is your design appointment where you get to see me in this version. We're going to create something really special for you to suit that certain place in your home. And also to you, the students that are going to work with you as well. So let's create something. We had so much fun, it was so easy, it wasn't hard work. Tori had a ball, it would be everyone loves the ice ball. So I didn't think everyone goes, oh my god. Yeah, you can change the photo there, that's amazing. And then everyone plays it. With the quality of the photos, the way you bring your eyes out, like they're happy. It was so natural, it wasn't fake. And everyone pretty much just come over and said the same thing. It was really natural. Thank you for visiting Enhanced Photography Studios. Please call us now so we can organise a time to look after you and your family. Have a great day. Cool. So what does that video kind of tell you? That's a question for you, Libby. Oh, the, okay, okay. I thought it was a test for the um for the participants. Oh, no. it tells what does it tell me, you? It tells me that you have an incredibly well established business physically and process wise. You have a workflow that that seems to work. Um, you seem friendly. Um, somebody who you know I'd want to interact with in a photo shoot. Um, and you produce beautiful photography. Yeah. And it's one of those things. Now, imagine if, now, this is a part of the education part. You already know everything. There's nothing that you don't know about our studio. Like, that is the process. It's the same process, every single client's the same stuff. Now, I guess if I didn't have a video to tell you those things, imagine how dorky that would be as a conversation. Hi, I'm Mark. Yeah, I'm the owner. Yeah, I'm actually an award-winning master photographer. I've won over 50 international awards. Um, we photograph about 500 families per year. Um, I'm really good at what I do and I've got this beautiful, like, you just sound like an idiot. <laughs> like, and this is the thing, the video does it all for you. It tells you who you are in a professional way without you physically Big noting yourself, not that you're not big noting yourself, like you just sound like you just, it's just like, you just, I'm a really good photographer, you should buy my book because I'm awesome. <laughs> um, it just sounds a bit dorky. So, 
so yeah, so it's one of those things where it's like it, it shows you and it gives you the expectation for the client as well. All right. Now you've, you've muted yourself too, Libby. I don't know, just in case you were doing something funky in the background. Can't hear you. Can't hear you at all. You're muted. Sorry. Yes, it was because I was doing a sneaky screen grab because I liked what I saw. Okay. <laughs> Is that what that was? As long as a sneaky screen grab. That's fine. Um, so did you get it? I did. Thank you very awesome. much. All right. And hey, Mark, I just wanted to add one thing in. You, you, you know, uh, I like to ask questions, so you just can tell me to 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 be. You can mute me. That's um, fine. If you prefer, but um, I can only imagine that video footage like that right now is even more important during COVID era, where people oh, are not as um, you know, able to and interested in being in physical connection in it like an in-store or in-studio experience so the video would just had go take you to another level right now video is everything like it's video is just everything like video is just a whole nother world of awesomeness and if you don't know video you can do it simply you can do it basic you can use iMovie there's so many ways that you can use video um, throughout your, your business to communicate your story because technically that's all that you're really doing is using video to communicate a story. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, and look, that video that you saw is quite complex. There was a videographer, there was planning, there was all that type of stuff. You don't need to go that complex. You can simplify it really easy as well. It's just a matter of a um, little bit of storyboard, a little bit of planning, a little bit of order, order, organization. We've all got video cameras with our computers and our actual camera cameras. It just depends on how technical you want to get as well. So, yeah. All right. So now the fact finding stage, this is your blog post. This is your website hook. This is your lead magnet that molds your buying criteria. This is, this is like, I want to, I want to find more about you. I need to know if you're the right business for me. Like, why should I come to you? Why should it be Memento Pro? Why not Snapfish? Why not, you know, like, where should I go with all of this? Did you just get a coffee? I'm really jealous if that was coffee. Somebody's getting it for me. Nice. We'll just... <laughs> uh, <laughs> here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> yes. Very cool. Um... So it's kind of like now you've got their attention. Give them something. Give them, give them some information. And you're like, what kind of information? That's a great example. Things like this. So from a photography point of view, I mean, from a domestic point of view, newborn checklist, five things I wish I knew before I booked photographer and eight perfect locations and what a granny's undies have to do with portrait photos, which is a blog post that's all about when your grandma dies, you're not going to keep her undies, but you're going to keep the memories of the albums. You're going to throw that shit out straight away. But yeah. the albums, like, how's, so random, I never kind of got this connection, but when, when we came back from overseas, we actually stayed at my wife's grandma's house. No, did not see her undies. because that's Good to hear, good to hear. But... We lived in her unit that she's lived in for 20 years and there's just photography everywhere, everywhere. Her wedding photos, her cousins and aunties and grandkids and family photos. Like there's just memor memorabilia everywhere. And look, she's now, she's now eight, she's 90, 80, 90. Um, so it's like, you know, half of the stuff in the unit they're just going to throw out because it's just absolute old and <laughs> decrepit and rubbish and blah but there's lots and lots of precious items and photos of the, one of those renee my cousin wants her false teeth <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm not even going to ask anyone about that anyway but what are they it's a checklist it's a blueprint it's a how-to guide it's a step-by-step -step guide. It's a, it's a process, like make it easy to understand. The idea of these website hooks, it's a marketing strategy. I'll 
if you give me your name and email and phone number, I will give you this part of information that I know that you need. It's client education, highlights who you are, your unique selling points, nurtures your client's inquiry. So it's a call to action. It's designed to excite, delight, inspire, and educate your clients. Help solve the problem for your potential client in terms of like a problem. Okay, so problem is that what do you give to someone who's got everything? You know what I mean? Like you might, it's the photo book of where they grew up. It's a photo book that you made of their life. How to make a photo book of someone's life. Libby, there's a blog post for you. Oh, yes. Don't and worry. it's one of the things like, you know, help solve, solve a problem and do a special offer at the end. Now, it could be as easy as a PDF. It could be a video. It could be an email series. It could be a Facebook bot. It could be lots of different things. As an example on my website, is it this one? Want to know how to build a successful photography business? Enter your email and we'll show, we'll show you a free eight part video series on how to learn how to set yourself up for success and map for your photography experience. And, I th and also too, you gotta make things as easy as possible for your clients to do. So what I want you to do is to take out your phone and take a photo of the barcode and it will link directly to the blog. Mm. It's a bit tricky, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it, hey? Do many people use this? I'm fascinated to know. Do many people use the QR code functionality? I don't even know if it still works. It do <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I made this. Oh, wow. There you go. Let's just check that it works. This is a whole new experience for me, to be honest. And it's taken me straight to your web page. Is it? It's there loading. You know. It's loading. It worked. Wow, okay, it's happening. Cool. Now, here we are. Perfect. You can put your details in and it's all there. Anyway, so I guess it's one of the things like, and this is the thing make it easy for your clients to engage uh, with you. I've just told you what I wanted you to do. I said, go here, look at this. So when I do um, a stage platform presentation, I use that. And everyone goes, oh, okay. And then everyone writes in their emails and I don't have to go around and get everybody's emails. Huh. Makes life so much easier. I love how though you're, you're asking them for something, but giving them something in return. So it's, a, yeah. it's, it's communication. It's two way. It's not just one way. Yeah. If I told everyone to just pop your email on this piece yeah, of paper, yeah. they'll be like, no, don't want to. Loser. <laughs> it's like, don't want to. What yeah, I want to they're a little bit like, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to spam me? But yeah, if, yeah, we already yeah. know that if, if you do spam us, it's going to be decent information. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> a learning experience. Okay. Now I had a few people who in the question that we had, what do you want out of this was uh, social media, right? This is a part where they start to narrow their choices. They've made the decision that they want to buy whatever it is screenshot this at the end uh libby you'll see it how can you tell i'm screenshotting because you can take your eyes to left hand side to right hand side and you had a little smirk oh my god sneaky bugger <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell wait till the end so you've got all, right, all the information all... otherwise you're gonna have like five things <laughs> thank you ma that's okay that's what i'm here for all right keep yourself top of mind it's in <laughs> social media email series, educate, delight, entertain, inspire. So in terms of your social media, in terms of your communication, it should be 80% excite, delight, entertain, inspire, 20% sales kind of message as well. All right, oh, coffee. Um, so, oh, see now I'm distracted by coffee. Um, so I guess it's one of those things like, Keep your clients kind of top of mind. You would have heard that and everyone would have heard that a gazillion times. Keep them top of mind. Keep your clients top of mind. Keep them engaged. Especially, you wanted some things, tips to do with the COVID. Especially now. 
because there's nothing else to do. Can't go anywhere. Do a video, do a post, connect with people, social media. You put these webinars on because of mm. COVID-19. Mm. I did that whole education. It's uh, the education exchange what the taught the webinar. So we had 30 days of free education every single day from 9 to 9.30 for 30 days, purely to stay top of mind, to inspire, to excite, to educate, to entertain them because nobody knew what to do. Everyone was lost. Yeah. Now our world's slowly calming down a bit, but I guess it's like stay connected with your people. Yep. Now, when we talk about social media content though, don't just post a travel image or a newborn image or another album or another album or another wall art or another album or another photo of a travel. It's like, we get it. You're a good photographer. We know we've done the same backlight photo five times in a row now. You know, that was so 2000s, like come up with something new <laughs> type thing. We need to make sure our social media is a little bit more engaging. There you go, screenshot that one. I didn't do the last one, Mark. No, that's right. You didn't need to, no, there's more to that one. Oh, yeah, of course. Sorry. <laughs> but it's like <laughs> social... You know, single images, behind the scenes, blog posts, personal photos, what to wear, what to bring, products, black and white, testimonials, do a poll, you know, from a travel photographer. Where have you traveled to? What's your favorite place? A funny travel meme. Like photograph the photography kit you take, before and after edits. Now everybody, the whole a lot of people on this call are very quiet right now. Um, for those people who are on the call, please write something in the chat box of some sort of something to give us an indication that you're enjoying this or any questions at all of some sort. What has been your blinding flash of the obvious thing so far? There you go. Um, I love it. <laughs> um, there's so much stuff that you can talk about on social media rather than just post a photo. And this is what we we're saying at the very early, your unique selling point. So people want to be connected to you, who you are, this is the trust. This is the salesman. This is the trust. This is the accreditation. This is the, you know, connecting with people as well. They want to know you behind the camera. And if there's not enough ideas there to post about, then I'm sure there's going to be plenty more ideas here. Daily events, selfies, your studio, interview people, facts. Flashback Friday, quotes, awards, accreditation, share your passion, upcoming events, photo walks. Like, there it is, product reveal. Like, you know, all these different things. So. Um, yes, Mark, what I'd written before that was, I think the most beautiful moment is when um, the, um, when people receive, it doesn't matter if you're a professional photographer handing it over to your clients or if you're, you know, um, uh, a mom handing it to your child or parent or whatever, but that moment when people get that book or album in their hand is such a beautiful thing to, to capture and it shows the product and it shows the response from the client. Yeah pretty massive but it's, you don't it, always have to have audio because sometimes i think audio can be a bit awkward in those things um it's up to it's all subjective but it might seem more staged with audio anyway yep just put on some music and you'll be fine yeah all right so there's lots that you can post here okay so i guess from here it's like you're one post away of getting your next clients one post away. All you need is that one photo, that one album, that one video, that one behind scenes, that one thing that makes people go, oh, I didn't know they did that. Or that one thing that makes you go, oh, I can resonate with what they're saying. Or, oh, that makes so much sense. I've been meaning to book that in for ages. You're one post away from getting your next client. So, I guess from here, it's now just waiting for the right time. So you've made a decision, just wait, don't screenshot it yet. 
There's one more picture. <laughs> From step number one, when you said, hey, I need something, to step number six is just the timing thing. Like buying a car, it might take you one week, it might take you six months. But it doesn't matter what you purchase, you go through the motions of all of these. Think about anything you've purchased, anything you've done, any decision that you've kind of made, you're still going to go through the process of this. I guess now it just comes down to creating marketing opportunities to purchase a shoe or purchase a book or purchase something, purchase a wall art, walk into a gallery, like buy something, like you're creating something. Okay, so now's a good time to screenshot, Libby. That's the last one. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Up to six. Um, and it's interesting um, your comment there about, you know, create the opportunity or connect with other people to, sorry, just let me make sure that's in there, um, create marketing opportunities to purchase a session. Because what I'm seeing here as you're talking is I can tell which of our customers have either done their own marketing, um, you know, research, or you've been their consultant or advise them because we end up seeing promotional con collateral come through our doors as well. And I happen to have one here where, you know, people have done things just like what you said. Hold on. Oh, yeah, I suppose. So, we have a few portrait photography customers, you know, who've done deals with either, um, you know, other businesses that are related to, um, Who's, it's Heart what? Story. Oh, Heart Story, yeah, yeah. Yep. And they have done a deal with um, Tracy and the team at Calm Parent Ca uh, Canberra, where they'd like to gift you, whoever is the recipient of this card, a portrait experience with them. Um, yep. We have Uber. Uh, no, this is a little bit different, although I know Uber do things, but say Welsh Photography in Sydney, I know they work with a local BMW and Audi um, car dealer where yep. they get a, um, a special, uh, like a gift certificate for or a free session yep. um, and things like that. Yep. That's your third party active marketing strategy that we're going to be stepping into right now. Right. So good segue, Libby. I'm glad we planned that. Yep. Marketing, it's all about creating opportunities for your clients to engage with your business. You need to understand as well that marketing's fun. It's fun. Like, don't think that marketing's a drag. It is a bit of a drag if you don't kind of like it. It's like a retouching. Worst job in the world. <laughs> I hate retouching. But marketing's fun. Like, have fun with your marketing. It's just getting creative with different marketing ideas. But one of the things that we need to do with any business, especially when you're starting out, is we need to get out of the friend zone. Because we all start with our family. Friends, our family, our aunties, our cousins, brothers, sisters, photographing kids and weddings and people that know people because the trust is there. And it's really easy. And then you get into the friends where you've asked your friends and they're a friend of a friend or someone that you know that knows someone of something and, and you're working to sell your books and your albums and your photography and your family portraits and your weddings and they're all connected through friends, right? When you have kind of made it <laughs> type thing, when you, when you know that your marketing's working and everything's going awesome, is you get clients that you have no idea who they are. No idea. All of a sudden, they've just booked in. They've just booked it. They've brought it. They've purchased it. How did you find me on Google? And you're like, no shit. It actually worked. You mm -hmm. found me on Google. Um, it's a, when you have clients who've got no idea who you are, you're out of the friend zone. That's when you know that you're doing all the right things. But understand that there's a time and season for everybody. And it's okay to be in the friend zone. Because that's your testing, your trialing. If you're going to make a mistake, make it with a friend. Don't make it with a real client. <laughs> real client. Like test the waters, practice with friends and family so that when you do get a real client, you've got systems that are tested and measured as well. Mm -hmm. Right? Cool.
And they can also start, like, they're like your foot soldiers. They can help just spread the word. And when, exactly. you know, they always talk about you need multiple touch points or to hear about a brand or a product or, or organisation from multiple, you know, um, directions or people. And family and friends help do that. Yep. So the question is, with all the people on this call so far, tell me. How many leads do you have right now? Mm. Lead, people to follow up with and call. Mm. It's the people that are here. How many leads do you have right now? Pressure is on for the um, audience to participate here. Yes, yes. How many leads do you have in your system? Then the next question is this, and even if you're watching this kind of later, yeah. you won't tell me because I won't be there, but <laughs> future Mark will be there. Anyway. The next question is, how many marketing campaigns do you have going at any one time? So, if you've only got one campaign going, you're in trouble. If you've got three, you're probably still in trouble. You need to have multiple campaigns having at going at any one given time. Then the questions are, with all that you're doing, are you happy with the number of bookings that you have? Because I'm tipping, if you have no leads and you're not doing any marketing campaigns, you're probably not happy with how many bookings that you have running. Which would also lead me to that if not, what's stopping you from getting, from booking more clients? Like why have you, like, why have you not tried? Why are you not doing marketing? Why are you not doing anything? There's nothing like zero dollars in your bank account to give you some motivation to move your butt. <laughs> like, like there's, there's, some of us have lots of blocks about why you're not moving forward. But it's one of those things you really need to make sure that you are moving forward. The hard part is, I'm gonna say like, but the reality is too, and totally understand it, it's really hard to stand out in a crowded marketplace. And the, and, and the part that drives you nuts, it's just frustrating that all your marketing efforts are getting you nothing but crickets. So you're doing everything. You're just like a hamster in a treadmill. Whatever you're trying is not really working. Or the analysis paralysis that you actually are not doing anything <laughs> Because you don't want to try because just in case it doesn't work and now you're just not doing anything at all. So the reality is you need to be seen about seven times. Okay. Now this is probably going back a few years. Now it's probably, I don't know, 10 times, 20 times, 30 times. We're so oversaturated with everything. Our brain goes crazy. Yeah. But this is a really cool diagram from a great friend of mine, Carly. All right. I'm going to screen it. grab it, okay? That's fine. Let me explain. Let, let me explain this one a little bit. It's going to be a bit of a reality check for some people. If you're invisible, you're in drought mode. You're frustrated and overwhelmed. You have zero brand awareness. You're struggling in your business. You have zero growth. You have no leads and you're testing the market trying to figure out what the hell is going on in your world. Then you become visible. Yay, you launched the website. <laughs> You've got a dribble of leads. You're working really hard, but you're trying to like a hamster. But you're surviving. You know, you, you're getting there. You've got some traction, but you're really just building brand awareness and getting some information out there. See, where you want to be is have a flow and stand out from the crowd. You want to have direction, you want to have traction, you want to be set up, you want to be inspired, and you want to be moving forward because you're a great photographer and what you really need to do now is just master the art of your business so that you can take it from a hobby into a business to actually getting paid or going from 20000 a year to 100000 a year or 150000 a year, all right? The fun part is when you're in flood mode, kind of top of mind, when you can create, and this is the fun part, 
You can create systems, traffic, leads and sales on demand. Just, I need to get some leads. Create something, bang, you've got yourself 20, 30, 10, 15, 100 leads straight away. And you have a team around you. You have a good accountant, you have a social media person maybe, you've got a bookkeeper maybe, you've got a retoucher with you, uh, a Libby, you've, you've got Memento Pro to help you to organize your books, organize your systems, to help you out, to give you direction in what size, what cost effective, what paper, what other people do. Like yep. your team is Libby. Libby is on your, wait, one more. Team. See what I did there? Team. Yes. The Libby team. Team Libby. Yep. Like, we have an industry of amazing suppliers who legitimately want to help you. Mm. So, just because this is at the top of mind, if you're feeling invincible, it's okay because Team Libby's already here. And Mark, I'd just like to say, um, I, you will not have seen it, I don't imagine, in the chat manager window, but I've already committed to providing more content that people can use, you know, uh, you know, to make it easy for you guys to tell the story, to explain the benefits, to show how it's hand produced in Australia. So Team yep. Libby will be doing more. Cool. So my question for you out there in the world of webinar, what color are you? <laughs> are you purple? Are you red? Are you orange? Or are you yellow? Because it's one of those things, once you know where you are in your business, you can also set up goals to get to where you need to be as well. Hey, right. Mark, I just want to point out too, I, I have a feeling that a lot of um, the panellists might be down towards the purple-red area because I specifically labelled this or titled this webinar Marketing 101. Yeah. Because um, we have a lot of people now who are in the Memento Pro service and it's something we've all seen, uh, you know, across the industry over the last few years where, you know, um, there are a lot of enthusiasts, pro enthusiasts, whatever we want to call them, yeah. who have skills and an interest, but maybe are, are now wanting to take their photography to the next level. And um, I, I kind of think from what we've seen in the response to some of these questions that we have a few on board with us today. Yep. Yep. And to be honest, I can, every time I do this, 90% fit between purple and red. Yep. Like very rare does someone go orange and a uh, yellow. And, and, and Mark, I can see that too. I can honestly see that when I speak to a majority of our customers or, or people at trade shows who are photographers who know their craft and they know their technical, you know, skills, they have technical skills, but they don't necessarily have the, yeah. you know, you talk about systems being a very much part of these two systems and skills to sell and to service properly. And that's kind of why I wanted you here. Yeah. And look, those people that you held up, the, the cards, Art Story, Uber, I saw Peter Sharp on there, they're all in yellow. Yeah. They can, they can generate sales on demand at the drop of the hat. But have they done your course? Yes, they have, all three of them. <laughs> no, like, but it is, do you know what, to Mark, Mark, to me it is fascinating because I don't have conversation, I, I remember my conversations with people like those people you've just talked about because they do have another level of, you know, they've got a solid business plan and idea behind them and it doesn't necessarily come naturally, which is why it's good to be learning about things like this right now. <laughs> It's funny, I had a really awesome compliment once. It's probably one of my favourite ones. Where it's like, Mark, I'm like, I had a photographer that was pretty well known. If I told you her name, you'd probably know her. I'm not yeah. going to, but you'd probably know her. <laughs> and she's like, I said, why are you joining for? And she goes, do you know what, Mark? Everybody I know who's successful has one thing in common. That's you. They've all done your course. And she listed like eight to 10 people. Mm. It's like this person, this person, this person, this person, they've all done your course and they're all doing training with you. So whatever you're doing, 
clearly working. And um, it's one of those things like they have. Yeah. So it's, it's all, it's all good. Well, I can honestly say that that's how I've come to know more about your work. And I think what the defining characteristic is though, like you can go and, um, you know, find a marketing consultant or a business consultant, but they may not actually have ever been actively a photographer or run a studio. So actually you have a, a very unique combination of skills, like, the whole package yeah. where you're speaking from experience, but you understand the business strategic marketing side of things too. And so. photographers are weird. We're a weird bunch of people. We are, we are a weird bunch. Like we are in a very interesting market. So um, to have that understanding is really important. Also to, to know what genre does what. Absolutely. What works and why it worked and i guess i'm going to run through about 15 marketing strategies now um so knowing which one to go for what and why is super important which leads me to almost like we plan this living well i uh, just like everyone to know we didn't but it's no. <laughs> out nicely isn't it <laughs> it is dominate your market with five to twelve marketing channels at any time like you've got to have five to 12 marketing things happening at any time. And you're like, but what are five to 12 marketing things? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. One is your active marketing strategies. Your active marketing strategies are those two cards that you held up that were specifically a third party alliance strategy that actively goes out and grab clients in. Issue with being too active, too many giveaway, competition, Third party, giveaway, giveaway. You're always on sale. You're always on special. Mm. You're always giving away. There's no real true value there. Mm. So you've got to be careful not to be too active in your marketing. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the flip side, your passive marketing. Your passive marketing is more like, it's like a billboard. It's your blogs. It's your websites. It's your social media. It's your promotional material. It's your staying top of mind. It's your gift bags. It's your educational video, your car signings and things too much passive marketing and you're going to wait a very long time for your client to book you in. So these work like a match made in heaven. You need a really good active marketing strategies, but great passive marketing strategies, which is your brand awareness and your brand awareness will activate the active marketing strategies. So it's like a little match made in heaven. And you're like, what does that mean? What does it even look like? I'm glad you asked. I've done this a few times. <laughs> Active marketing strategies like your social media campaigns, your expos, your referrals, your third party marketing is what you showed before, your fates, your fairs, your carnivals, your fundraisers, your family of the year, calendar events, past promotion clients, networking. It's huge. Passive. SEO, blogging, branding, educational videos, websites, social media, signage, editorials, articles, packaging, website hooks. It's all the stuff in the background, which is really important. Now, in terms of all of this, and I love this quote, this is one of my favorite quotes at the moment. It's this, as to methods, there are a million and then some, but principles are few. The man who grasps the principles can successfully select his own uh, methods. The man that tries methods ignoring the principles is surely to have trouble. Meaning, screenshot that. <laughs> Meaning. There's a gazillion ways that we can market as photographers, but if you don't get the basics put in play to start with, you are going to surely have trouble. You need to make sure that you understand the principles. And this is the thing, there's so many ways to go to market. Use your time and effort effectively, which kind of means what we want to do is we don't want to spray and play. We don't want to just throw out hundreds of dollars to marketing campaigns or to boosting posts or something silly and then hope it works. Mm -hmm. On the hope, gee, I hope it works, but $5,000 on a billboard, it's like, do you really need to spend five grand on a billboard? There's probably other ways that you should use that money. But the first part that you need to really understand is who is your ideal client? You said something interesting before about Ken Duncan in the 80s. Mm. He's just kept up. His yep. books with the same clientele who buy the same stuff. He produces a book, they buy it. It's yep. really easy. It's really not rocket science. Are they male? Are they female? 
or are they both? Where do they live? Are they self-employed? Like, what is a certain trade or profession? What's their income? What interests do they like? Do they like travel, sports, food, religion, culture? What excites them? What keeps them up at night? What do they love to spend money on? Where do they hang out? Are they online? Are they re in real life? Like, where do they find those kind of people? So once you know your ideal client, you can start to really uh, market and to manage your business around this. Yeah. Um, Mark, can I just interrupt to say before, you, as we're moving on from that screen is, um, I think that um, Ken uh, was lucky to have his, shall I say, heyday or, you know, the, when he, you know, he was distinctly, I remember as a kid, because I was only a kid then, that, you know, Ken Duncan and Steve Parrish were the names you'd always see because Steve got his deal through Australia Post, but Ken Duncan was one of the only landscape photographers I'd ever heard of. Um, yep. But he also had the benefit of being first to market in that regard. And he had so few, like compared to now, there weren't a million other kind of channels and pieces of communication coming towards us. Like he had space to get his message out and things have changed a lot. And, you know, the fact that you and I as marketers and marketing consultant in your case, the, our world has changed so dramatically in the last few years for us to keep up is a challenge for yep. photographers to keep up is the biggest challenge because what you just said was that experience is the biggest way to learn and yep. you know it takes time yep. to experience what does and doesn't work so hopefully we're helping you narrow some things down here. yeah it's funny because you got that um the burgers are better at hungry jacks but mcdonald's they did it first yes yes mcdonald's burgers are really not that good i had one yesterday and it's Really I'm vegetarian good. and don't like those yep. kind of things. So I agree. <laughs> yep. But it's one of those things like they did it first. Yep. Ken Duncan was out there first. Is Ken Duncan an amazing photographer? He's pretty good. Is yep. he the best photographer? But there's a lot of people the who are doing a lot of similar work these days with yep. amazing equipment. And, yep. you know, he's got more competitors too. Yeah. And that's the point. It's like, is he that good? No, he's not that good. There's another probably 2,000 people that are just as good or, or better. It's just that he's, he was first. He's he also is name. incredible at communicating. He's a yeah. good spoke. He, he um, is very much, you know, you see Ken in public. He communicates about himself. He hosts events that educate his people. He yeah. hosts experiences, come to the gallery opening. He has an extensive email database. These are all things that yeah. on top of the fact that he had an incredible leg up in the 80s, he Finally. has been very savvy about yeah. how he communicates. And I saw him at... A presentation a little while ago oh the five years ago and we went out for uh, lunch as well and um he's a really nice guy he's he's he's, he's a great guy he's he's awesome um but he's he, like you said he's got his following of people that he connects with which is really cool um as well now we've got a we do have a question in the question box by mike wright Oh. How do you identify the ideal client? How do you figure out the answers to the who? Whoa. Experience, pretty much. You'll know who your ideal client is, the ones who buy the most. You know who they are. If not, look at who your competitors are buying from. Look at who, look at who they're buying from. Look at how they've set up. Look at their marketing. Look at their process. It's like... The saying is, um, research from one, you're a copycat. Re no, copy from one, you're a copycat. Copy from a many, and it's uh, research. Yes. You're researching. You just, just look at the research, and there's so much data out there as well. Um, this is a really important step that you don't, you don't miss this step. Like, you've got to know who your ideal clients are and why you're doing what you're doing anyway. Um, the other parts are like, you need to have a clear client sales funnel as well. Now, a sales funnel could be like how you communicate. So in this case, 
there's a marketing channel of some description. There's a call to action. They go to a landing page. They fill out their details. So this is more for portraits. They pre-qualified, they have pre-qualifying questions which identifies their ideal target market. They go into your database and you contact the clients and you book in the shoot and you treat them like a $10,000 client. Be really clear about the channel that you're doing as well. So those two examples that you held up, the marketing channel, so third party marketing. Call to action, they got a card and it says, call to register. Okay, they don't have a landing page, but they have to fill out some details to say, hi, I've received this card, this is who I am, this is what I've done. Their pre-qualifying question is not really a question. The fact that they've just bought a $100,000 car is pre-qualifying them to go, yes, I have money to spare. Mm -hmm. They are part of the, the database now, and now it's just a matter of calling the clients and booking them in. And I'm just thinking, Mark, for given that we've got some landscape travel wildlife photographers, maybe the equivalent of the car sales or, you know, the car dealership is like a, a, a premium travel company or travel agent or something like that where, you know, you know that their clientele have similar interests. They like to explore and to see things in nature and the, those kinds of things. So that might be the right kind of person to communicate with. Yeah, totally. So I spoke to uh, Lauren Bath and Lauren Bath is um, Australia's first leading professional, professional Instagrammer. Instagram photographer. Um, and I had a chat with her a few weeks ago. It's like tourism companies are streaming for content at the moment. They yeah. are just like, they need so much content. And yes, it might be free, but it's exposure. <laughs> exposure. We'll pay you with exposure. Um, you know, it might be exposure. It might be a paid gig. It might be like they're streaming for content. So get out there, write blogs, write articles, get seen, get well known. Um, when people are going to locations, they're buying artwork. They're buying from local galleries. They're buying the, that story of the memory of being in the Whit Sundays and stuff. Like that's what they're paying for. And Mark, just on the Lauren Bath factor, um, I'm a big fan of Lauren Bath. I think she's, um, you know, an incredible um, educator as yep. well in that domain. So for those of you who are interested in travel photography specifically, she does have a check out the travel boot camp that she yeah, um, runs to um, if because she's very specific in that world. Um, that's the only reason I, I want to, to make a comment about that. <clears throat> cool. The other part too with your portraits and the weddings, and this is just a fun little thing here, is give them a call. No, no, I've emailed them. No, no, give them a call. I'll text them as well. Just call them. I'll send, like, people want to connect with people more than ever. They don't want another email. They don't want like, yes, yeah. you can do an email to get started, but people want to connect with people. What I'm going to do just for time's sake, I'm going to storm through all these different marketing ideas. Yeah. Cause Mark, can you believe your two hours is just past nearly one. 15 and... minutes today. Yep. So let's storm through this. All right. Referrals. Go get yourself referrals. Ask for the referral. Be open. Be honest. Do you know anyone else that would love this experience? Do you know anyone else that would love this book? Do you know anyone else in the travel industry? Do you know anyone else that is looking for articles about travel or, or landscapes or whatever it is? Ask for it. I've got an example, Mark, a specific example, the easy way to get referrals. If you're a wedding or portrait photographer, when you do thank you cards for them, as a gift, not only will you surprise and delight them, but if you put your logo on the back, your card's going to be handed to people who are probably also likely to get married or be having babies. And they've got a physical product in their hand, which, which means that when you go to sell them printed products, they already appreciate the value. But it's, you know, that perfect, yeah, word of mouth referral. Exactly. Then you've got the, the blogging, right? Interesting shit. <laughs> I don't know how you... Write stuff that people actually want to read about the topics that you know about, that you're expert about. Your calendar marketing. Oh, my font's gone funny. Calendar marketing. 
Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day. You've got different ways that you can kind of market. From a portrait point of view, the product is the gift. So you need to start advertising 1st of October to December to say, if you want your artwork under the tree for Christmas, you need to be ordered by 1st of December. The experience is the, the gift. Is your fa are your family coming together for Christmas this year or for Easter or for Mother's Day? COVID-19, it's a breakout. Like when is your next family kind of gathering? So the experience on getting photos at Mother's Day is the gift. Then the gift is the gift, meaning on Mother's Day, you give them a gift voucher to go do a photo shoot. All right? Um, there's three opportunities for one holiday. So Christmas, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, four times four. What's that? What are four fours? Four fours are... 16. 16. There's 16 marketing opportunities. It's easy when you put it that way. Now, thank you cards. So the automated version is using send out cards or cardly because you just upload and automate it and it's all done. You don't even have to think about anniversary cards, first birthday cards. Or you go to Libby, you yep. get a whole heap of them Much nicer. Out. Much nicer product. Doesn't have the cardly send out card logos on it and disgusting stuff. And you can personalize it, which is really super cool. All right. Then you've got things like your website hook and email series that we've already gone through. Then you've got things like your Facebook strategies. This one on the far left is a collaboration offer. The collaboration offer is when you get a number of businesses come together to create a major prize to go to market to promote your photography. And notice that this one here, this is 2017, got 67 shares. I've had other businesses lately do this, that this has had like, 400 shares and 800 people vote. It's ridiculous. Wow. The wanted ads. We all know the famous wanted ads. Be careful. You get what you wish for. If you're asking for free, you'll probably get free people. So buy the one there. This is a, a dinner, a night out at the Crown kind of Metropole. That got 550 shares and 739 comments that built their database by like a thousand people within a week. Because they're a portrait studio who targets who wouldn't want a night away at Crown Metropole for free after having kids around you for school holidays. This would be an awesome night away. So Again, it's excite, delight, entertain, and inspire. Repeat clients. Connect with your clients. It's really important to connect with them and offer them to come back again. It's easier to get old clients than to find new clients. SEO. Longtail Pro will help you find your keywords. Yoast SEO will help you write your copy for your website. If it's a WordPress, that's what we recommend. But I know that Wix and Squarespace has their own um, SEO platform. <clears throat> Street of the week. This was fun. One of the girls liked to go for a walk every lunchtime. So we just went down a different street every lunchtime and gave them a little promo. Your packaging. Make sure that it's very clear about your packaging and your branding and that you're showing what people buy on your social media, that it's a real thing that people buy albums and boxes and books and all sorts of stuff. Then you've got the, oh, this is my favorite. And people go, what are you doing? Christmas in September. And I'm like, yes, Christmas in September and October. Because if you don't order your artwork by the 1st of December, it will not be under the Christmas tree. So this is what you need to do. And also it increases your sales that you have because they're gonna come through even sooner because in September, October, you can say, hey, have you had the chance to look at, think about your Christmas gift? Wouldn't it be one last, wouldn't it be nice to have one last thing to think about? 
Animated video, do video, video of your products, video of your clients, video of your slideshows, videos of lots of different things. You can do videos, Animoto is really easy. You can use iMovie as well. Business to business relationship with photographers. Just because you photograph newborns, you can refer someone for the, the weddings and weddings can refer someone for your newborn. Same with your travel photography. I don't do that, but someone else is doing that as well. So there's lots of different business to business to connect each other as well. I'll just storm through these ones. Uh, Libby, there's only four left. That's okay. And then I have a few product ideas that I'd just like to show people too. Cool. Networking. There's me and All Mike your Larkin. All right. So I started the Melbourne Wedding Group and I started that in 2012 or something. In the end, we put, out, we put on our own expos, we put out on our own events. This is why I had 20 weddings a year without having to do any marketing at all ever because these were my marketing team with all the other suppliers. It was awesome. Kate Smash, <coughs> love a good Kate Smash. Using the cards that Libby has, invite them back in for a Kate Smash. But Send it at 10 to 11 months old so that they've got time to book in. Then don't even get me started on promotional branding. Yes. Uniforms, stationery, magnets, temporary tattoo for kids, balloons, dodgeballs, packaging, studio, signage, USB, stress balls, shopping bags, kids' toys. Gazillion different ways to get your brand out there as well. Headshots. In this case, for a portrait photographer, it's not about the headshots. It's about getting the owners and the directors and the managers into your studio to give them a family shoot to then get more third-party marketing, which is really fun. Libby's just like, I've got all these ideas. Yeah. Oh, my fun. <laughs> Educational videos, which is what Libby showed you before. Show them the videos. Show them the information. Show them what you have on offer. And the last thing is that all of these things are all going to lead, all roads lead to this here, which is now, whoops, now they're ready to purchase a shoot or purchase your album or purchase your book or just mm, do something. And that is what I wanted to cover today. I wanted to go through and make sure that everything is covered for you. Last few quick slides, and then I'm done, and you can talk as much as you like. Yeah. Last thing is, there's no quick fix. I'm sorry to say, there's no right or wrong way. There's no, you have to do this. You have to do that. There's a lot of, you could do this, and you should do this, and maybe you could do that. But depending on your business model, your personality, your genre, what you shoot, there's a gazillion different ways. Like you said, the principles, there's... There's a set amount of principles, but the method, there's heaps of different ways. Yeah. And I understand that it's all time over effort. Last thing is, what are, the, what are the two things you are going to do in the next seven days to make a change? And I want you to email me ah. of what you actually did. To give you a tip, it all starts with your website and educating your clients. Pew, 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 pew. So there and, you go. And thank you, Mark, because I know you said um, before everyone came online, we were talking about, um, Mark taught me a few other things too, um, that, that in industry-wise, like a two-hour webinar is quite extensive and, you know, it makes you, you, I saw it from a different perspective, which was it's easier to block out one hour of time in your day than it is to block out two hours of time. But I am actually very happy that we had the two hours today because um, I, I really do believe that most photographers who I interact with don't know a lot about marketing and or they're scared of it or they're not. They just need a bit of a confidence boost. Like maybe you've not only taught people knew things today, but you've also reiterated a lot of what they already knew and, and confirmed for them that it was the right next step that they might want to take. Um, but 
that's a wealth of information that you just provided for us in two hours. So thank you very much. All right, no worries. Um, and thank you also for um, allowing me to make it available for people to go and have a look at afterwards if you just want to step through things um, and recap on things. Um, because I have just been inspired by what you were saying in terms of products and, um, you know, yeah, products. I would like to show you a few products that we have at Memento that can be very helpful to you. And funny, Mark, I think that you'll probably recognise quite a few of your clients' uh, work as oh, I probably. hold these up. But um, And I'm also wary that I'm talking to people who are interested in weddings, portraits, travel, wildlife, um, you know, quite a gamut. So I've got a variety here. But um, one, one thing I like to, oh, see you guys. Uh, thank you, Mark. Lindsay. That was very useful. We're going to have to do our heaps of great ideas to pursue. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Amanda. Um, yes, great to see you. If you guys have to go, no problem. But um, you can always tune in and see these at the end. Um, Lauren Bath, who we were just talking about. I think yeah, the beautiful Lauren. thing about these calendars, these we do desk calendars and wall calendars, is they cost around, look, off the top of my head, about $20 or something. But if you do that as a gift, um, your images are going to be in their eye line the whole year. Um, if you do it for family portrait, you know, for a family portrait session, that's going to be like the visual cue to remind them, you know, they love looking at your images every day and it might just be the trigger they need in October to go and spend with you again. Um, the other thing is you can um, possibly work with a local, you know, speaking about local um, travel shots or in this case, animals, pets, you could potentially work with a local business news agent. I'm not exactly sure, a local bookstore or gift store that might want to sell um, local, you know, content or products by local creators and that's where things like these can come in handy too your like how many times do you go to a place and you want to get a trap a postcard and they're generally crap i'm always fascinated at how crap most postcards are um, so if you take some beautiful images of your area you know and put them in venues where people are visiting um, then you know that's the perfect way to spread your um, audience beyond just your friends and your family only if you put your details on the back. Um, and that's another one from Peter, Peter Sharp as well, who, I mean, who wouldn't want to send an image? I think that's just gorgeous. Ken Duncan does a, um, his art card series with us and he does a Christmas card as well. So Christmas cards, that's what I've got here. I think this is a great idea, but you could save um, an image from a family portrait shoot or a baby portrait shoot that you could surprise them with at the end of the year by turning into a Christmas or, you know, season's greetings card and send it to them. And if you put your logo on the back and don't worry, that's my mistake that it's not there, um, then that's just the perfect way to spread the word to their friends and family. Two more cards, surprise and delight, Mark, you talked about it. Um, the beautiful collective who did another one of our webinars and I highly rate and talk about their, they talk about their marketing um, tools too. But, you know, they just send a, um, a welcome letter that's just, then the client's not expecting to get this. It comes with, I think, a candle, a scented candle, just welcoming them to their service. But I think this is their, um, you know, the big kahuna. So you were talking, Mark, before about on your website, you've got to have all the information about who you are, what you do, pricing, packaging, and set the expectations. So they have that on their website. But as wedding photographers, because there's quite a lot to take in, they also have created this booklet that runs through things like tips on how brides and grooms can prepare for the day, tells them about the products and things that they do. And they always have that in their hand. But it feels beautiful and it, it also connects them with this concept of photos in print. So, and then the last but not least, because I was thinking about you guys who were talking about um, travel and, um, you know, how to get beyond your friends and family circle. So you could, um, you know, work with a local wedding venue or hospitality venue and take photographs of their place and their product and you could create them a guest book 
that just has, you know, that they can use for signing or for, you know, restaurants have them, you know, to check in their, their clients and stuff. And it's just a way of getting your images. You're giving them something. It doesn't need to be a hugely expensive book or, you know, but there are little things like that where you can get your content into another realm. So that's my hot tips. Now, does anybody have any questions? We've got a few people left. If you do, please feel free to throw them in now. Otherwise, um, you are more than welcome to email me at marketing at mementopro.com.au. But Mark, I'd like to come back to you now because what you just, um, <laughs> thanks Nick, no probs. Um, I, um, you also offer our customers, and I'm going to share my screen right now, a discount on some of your products. And I bet you I've just forgotten to open that up now. Hold on, I'll just open up my, this is what I want. Thank you. So you have a few different courses, one of which I think would be a perfect kind of next step from here is master your marketing and you make that available um, at a very nice rate to our customers. And while I'm fiddling around, Mark, can you just talk about it? <laughs> Hold on, you've somehow, um, you've, you've muted yourself or have I muted you? Can anyone? Um, can't hear you, Libby. Can hear you, Libby. Oh, sorry, I've been banging on. Mark, we can't hear you, and I don't think I've stopped it. Can you type if you know the answer? Oh, you muted yourself. Okay. I need to click on mute. Oh. Ask to unmute. Oh. I've really buggered this up, haven't I? My audio. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Apologies. Um, Audio settings, okay. Chat. <laughs> Press hold on space to temporarily unmute. Jeffrey, could you please help me? Oh, look, can you hear me, Mark? Guys, I am so sorry. This is very unprofessional. Um, hopefully my tech support team here. I have asked Mark to unmute. Yay! You didn't ask me to unmute. Sorry, <laughs> everybody. Yes, that's fine. That's fine. So sorry. That's all right. It's all good. Okay. Back to back to the chat. Yeah. So you, I would love you to just give people a little bit of a lowdown on what you can offer them in your specifically your master your marketing course, yep. and and just mention what the discount was. Yeah. Look, the master marketing course was is uh, is a really cool course that covers everything to do with the marketing. Now it is very heavily portrait, but you can adapt it to the wedding as well. Landscape, don't bother. Commercial, don't bother. Travel, I wouldn't bother either. <laughs> but it's very much a portrait um, and the wedding side of things. Mm -hmm. um, it covers everything from um, the fundamentals of sales and marketing, which is a lot that I went through today. Also, the knowing your numbers, knowing your stats, identifying ideal clients and how to forecast your business for the future. Um, the gift voucher system, how to get people into the studio, how to get the bums on seats. Then we go through all the different marketing ideas. Then there's about 60 other just random marketing ideas. So today I went through about 12, 15. So there's a whole lot of other different things that you can go through. Then you've got um, how to set up a 12 month marketing plan and we go through all the steps with the calendar with that. 
um, your closing styles on how to finalize the sale and how to close the sale as well. Um, and then Kylie Garner has just added or is adding a whole lot of digital marketing, which is Facebook ads and SEOing and all that digital landing pages and MailChimp and stuff. So that's all in there at the moment as well. So that's for people that want the Marcia marketing. And I'm just looking at that link that you just sent through. Yes. Yeah, so down the bottom of that page, Mark, and because I managed to just bugger things up then, um, you had um, made it possible for people to have $200 off the Master Your Marketing um, course, $100 off Sprint, and yes. then $100 off the Ultimate Wedding Workflow. So I might just pop that into the chat yep. manager there. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And if anyone has any other questions, go on to the, just the Mark Rosetto the website, book in a free coaching strategy session for half an hour as well. Have a bit of a chat, see what is working. That photography business coaching Brisbane. Yep. Is, is exactly. It's like, is that the best link Mark? Uh, let me have a look. Where does that go to? That was the one that I had used. Um, Yes, that is the that is the page that says contact Mark today for a free strategy session. Let's have a look. It's just thinking of loading. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You can go there. Cool. Yeah, it's all there. And how so, about what I do do just to ensure that I'm giving people the right information is after this is finished, I will email our attendees yep. just with those links so they have them um, readily accessible. Yeah, and just just email me, give me a call, I'm always here. Thank you. Cool. Thank you right. very much again to you, Mark. That That's was okay. fascinating. And to all of our attendees for getting engaged. Yep. Good and work. answering our questions. And um for those of you who were interested in the travel books and things like that, like I said, in two weeks' time, I will be doing the last webinar for the series. I'm not sure when the next one will begin, um, but it will be all about how to self-publish a photo book with kind of real world um, up to the minute information that I will be um, collating over the next two weeks. So thanks for joining us and drop me a, an email if you have any questions and your feedback is most appreciated as well. Cool. All right. The work team. Up. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> oh, yeah. Libby, Libby, I've done something wrong here, so I'm just going to, uh, not sure. Ah, oh, there we go. I'll leave. <laughs> Here's one.